Veteran Minecraft servers have always seemed to interest the Minecraft community, from the explosion of content surrounding history on the 2B2T Anarchy server, to the beginnings of the first creative server, Nerd.New. But I've noticed that one network has been suspiciously glossed over by many, and that network is known as Minecraft Online. While many people know of the server, not many know anything about it. After all, the largest video about it was a brief exploration from over three years ago, and the only other video that comes even close is Fit MCs about a griefing issue in early 2020. But Minecraft Online's history is much richer than that. Over the last 10 and a half years, MCO has evolved from the most basic survival world to a kingdom with millions of members spanning millions of blocks that could never be forgotten. In today's episode of Minecraft Uncovered, we explore the story of Minecraft Online, the first survival server. Before we get into the beginnings of Minecraft Online, let's set the tone. Just days earlier, Minecraft had entered Alpha, the fourth of five stages of game development before Minecraft was officially released to the public on November 18th of 2011. At this time, Minecraft didn't have many of the luxuries we know now, as survival multiplayer didn't even exist yet, and survival mode in its entirety was less than a year old at the time. But Notch had been working hard at multiplayer, completing the first test on July 22nd of 2010 in a stress test five days later, confirming that survival multiplayer was close to release. On August 3rd, Alpha version 1.0.15 was released to the public with the first working version of survival multiplayer, with the server files being released the day after. Immediately, hundreds of players raced to create a server to play with friends, with a few even sharing their world with the world, and among them were two very important players, Slow Riot and Roomchan. These two would become the founders of Minecraft Online, with Slow Riot creating the server and Roomchan creating the world within the first hour of survival multiplayer's release, entering private testing immediately. At the same time, developers were hard at work making plugins for the Minecraft multiplayer community, with LlamaCraft, the first anti-grief, and HMod, one of the first permission managers, both being released just two days later. On that same day, August 6th of 2010, Minecraft Online completed private testing, and equipped with both LlamaCraft and HMod, open to the public. We aren't sure where the first server growth came from besides close friends of the admins, but after just 24 hours, three new players by the names of Flippe, Raizul, and Who Got My Nick were promoted as the first moderators of Minecraft Online, and some of the first moderators of any server at all since the first moderation plugin was created just one day earlier. Minar would follow them just two days later, shortly before Alpha 1.0.16 was released with player authentication, making it possible to safely run the server. Throughout the next few weeks, MCO would go through a series of small changes and updates, with an IRC chat being added on August 15th, and Minar being demoted after less than two weeks due to item spawning abuse. By September, the server was steadily growing, with the 1,000th unique player joining on September 4th of 2010, and the 100th ban occurring on October 2nd of 2010 for the player Demon1227. But mostly, MCO was just trying to keep up with the constant Minecraft updates. See, back in 2010, Minecraft had a new version pretty much every few weeks, much more often than the yearly or biennial updates we tend to see nowadays. Usually, the server would update, MCO would wait a few days for HMod and LlamaCraft to catch up, and then the server would be back to normal. This trend would continue throughout the years, all the way to version 1.7.10 back in October 2014, where the server has stayed ever since. But we aren't in 2014 just yet, we're at the very beginning of 2011, where the server has just hit 10,000 unique players, and a server store was in the works. At this point, the network had become so large that it needed to be moved to a brand new server that was five times as big, and then again two months later to an even larger system, so most of the donation money at the time was reinvested into the server almost immediately. Around the same time, a player named Zymes had been promoted to moderator on April 1st, with everyone thinking it was just an April Fool's joke, which would go on to set the theme for a future tradition of allowing players to vote for new moderators on April 1st, most of which would be reverted back to normal players on the following day. But here is where we get our first glimpse into the actual community within Minecraft Online. 
We've been talking mostly about the technical stuff like servers and updates, but behind the scenes, or rather in front of the scenes since we're talking about the public now, a large community had begun to shape Minecraft Online into something more than just a server. It was growing into an empire, and Zymes was one of many helping to take it there. Along with his own smaller projects, like a beachfront complete with lighthouses, monuments, and even a great whale, he would also go on to found the largest transportation system in the history of Fredonia, the name that would be given to the MCO universe. He titled it Project Anubis, and while his first attempt at creating a high-speed railway had failed, he would follow it with the Fredonia Portal Corporation, providing the foundations for its modern equivalent known simply as the Nexus. I would love to go into more detail, and not just on the Nexus, but the hundreds of detailed cities, towns, and villages that it connects to, but I think it would be best to save those for future videos, if you're interested, of course. For now, we continue on through 2011, with the Facebook and Wiki pages created in April and the Nether added on June 18th of 2011, rendering the fake Nether, a large player-built sphere that I'd again love to cover in the future, obsolete. The rest of the year was rather slow, with the largest downtime in the server's history taking place over the course of 7 hours on August 22nd, a new testing server being brought online the day after, a 9km northern border expansion on December 7th, and a huge staff clearout on December 16th, removing Zymes, Who Got My Nick, and even Runechan from the team, closing off the year with nearly 40,000 players. 2012 started off uniquely compared to pretty much any other server I can think of. Usually when a new year begins, most Minecraft servers do the same few things. There could be a huge sale, maybe a new hub or world, possibly new game modes or updates, but no, Minecraft Online didn't need that. Instead, the year opened with the first broadcast of Minecraft Online Radio on January 9th, receiving a proper website the day after. No, I'm not joking, this Minecraft server actually had an official radio station, which would combine with a station called Arecibo Radio in July, running 24-7 until the middle of 2015. Not only that, but in between the development of said radio station, they also began running an official newspaper, though it unfortunately ended after just three issues. Another 9km expansion was tacked onto the server, this time on the eastern end, and the server would be updated to 1.2.3 to support the new world height of 256 blocks. Yeah, that's how old MCO is. In May, the server updated their warps, removing about half of the old ones and adding the towns of Autumnwood, Newlands, and Novum Kulta. October brought yet another expansion in the northwest, causing the discovery of Fredonia's first desert temple. And in April of 2013, they expanded 4 kilometers to the west as well as archiving and regenerating the nether so that players could harvest more quartz and other nether exclusive resources. After that though, the server quieted down quite a lot. Throughout the remainder of 2013, all of 2014 and 2015, and the first half of 2016, the only real news was a server migration, a 24-hour rollback to 2011's world for April Fool's Day, and the addition of a zombie pigmen police force that would spawn after a player was killed in PvP. But June 2016 brought on one of the most chaotic periods in the history of Minecraft Online, one that is yet to be brought to a complete end, and likely never will short of a server shutdown. On June 1st of 2016, a YouTuber by the name of The Camping Rusher posted a video to YouTube, entitled Oldest Server in Minecraft, referring to the server 2B2T. This day would go on to change 2B2T forever, but they weren't the only ones affected. Because, in typical YouTuber fashion, the title wasn't quite correct. 2B2T was not the oldest server in Minecraft. The right to that title belongs either to the creative server Nerd.New, or our very own Minecraft Online. This video exploded with over 3 million views and counting to this day, but it didn't stop there. Two days later, Russia released a sequel after the positive reception of the first, and these two videos combined would go on to rock the Minecraft Online community in a way they had never experienced before, driving the site to over 2 million views. Some of these players decided to stick around and become part of the community, but unfortunately I can't say that this invasion, dubbed the Rusher Apocalypse, was overall a positive experience. Thousands of players would come on demanding a duel with Rusher, one that they would never get, and many more would begin to grief and hack across the entire server, under the impression that this was the same server as in Rusher's video, which was an anarchy as opposed to an SMP. Since the initial influx of players, the amount of Rusher viewers coming in has slowed down a lot, and it's no longer dreaded when a player mentions how they found the server. 
but for a period of time in 2016, life was not fun. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. Over a year later, in July of 2017, a Russian YouTuber by the name of Mauser made a video on Minecraft Online, causing a huge wave of players, with the server reaching a milestone of 100,000 unique players within just four days of the upload. On November 20th, a YouTuber known as Studio Moon TV uploaded a video griefing the server. And just two days later, another creator by the name of Matam would follow in his footsteps, bringing a massive community of Czechian and Slovakian players to the server, most of which were seeking to wreak havoc. For a three-day period starting May 23rd of 2019, FitMC would mention the server in his own video, causing an influx of both tourists and griefers, something that would be repeated on April 4th of last year when he featured Minecraft Online in a video about April Fool's Day, causing the server to hit the player cap for the first time in recorded history. Earlier that same year, Salsi One's video on Minecraft Online, created all the way back in January of 2017, exploded because of the YouTube algorithm and brought the seventh final invasion of Minecraft Online. At the end of May, there was a 6km southwestern world expansion and on the final day of 2020, the Center for New Visitors was updated for the first time since the server's inception back in 2010. And that is where Minecraft Online stands today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I've been pretty interested in MCO ever since I first started looking into its history and wow, is there a lot. Potentially even more than 2B2T had a few years ago because of being older and the griefing protection. But anyways, I definitely suggest that you guys go check it out. It's a super interesting server that I would probably be playing for hours every day if it weren't for the lag. The IP is minecraftonline.com and all I'll say is please don't grief. There are plenty of servers where you can go if that's your intention, but seeing the world of Minecraft Online is genuinely amazing. And also just a quick addition before I render the video because I just finished editing it. I also wanted to say thank you to the five main people that helped me when I first got into Minecraft Online uh, because I just started playing like maybe a week or two ago. So I didn't really know very much about it. And uh, as Zeroeth, R9Q, Salimit69, IBX Toy Dog, and Charlotte Uwu were super, super welcoming and super helpful. And I'm sorry if I butchered half those names. I probably did. But uh, yeah, just wanted to say thank you to you guys. And uh, yeah, anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.